Does that mean question? UTXO basically means your Bitcoin amount. Mm, no, I wouldn't say that. UTXOs are... UTO, UTXOs are really all that really exist in Bitcoin. Your Bitcoin wallet makes up a bunch of different UTXOs. Th honestly, think of kind of it's a difficult thing to explain, honestly. But think of your UTXOs like mm, bills in your wallet. You got your wallet, which has let's say five hundred dollars in it, and you got five different hundred dollar bills in there. You got maybe four hundred dollar bills and then five twenty dollar bills. Those are all UTXOs each one of those. And just like, just like it would be to carry around $500 in nickels and dimes, you want to get rid of those. You want to convert those into bills to make it easier to carry, make it cheaper to carry. And it's a little bit different with $500 we're talking here, but let's say you had $5 million worth of pennies and dimes and nickels. That'd be very difficult to transact with and very difficult to carry around. So it just costs you more to hold smaller amounts. It's the same balance. It's just the how they're held. And on Bitcoin, you have to think of them. Bitcoin here. Let me let me bring up. Um, let me bring up the mempool again here. We'll go a little bit further into UTXOs because this is absolutely one of the most important things that people need to, to know about within Bitcoin, the UTXOs. So it's important to understand why, Bic why, why UTXOs matter. I kind of gave the overall, like how to think about it in terms of bills, coins, your total wallet. They, they add up to the same thing, but they're in different formats. And you want to have higher bills. You want to be carrying around less weight. But if you think about Bitcoin, every single one of these blocks here, let's look at 877054. This was the last block that was mined. All these blocks are just transactions. That's what a block is. It's just a bunch of transactions. It's a bunch of data. And each one of these blocks, there's only so much space within these blocks. And that's what the block size wars was about back in 2017, I believe. The big blockers wanted to make these blocks bigger. They wanted to allow more transactions, more data within them. And that has a, an effect on the overall network itself. That would cause things to be more centralized because people like me couldn't run a node and store all of that data on a node. It'd be very centralized. So the small blocks allow it to remain decentralized because the, the blockchain, the amount of data is smaller on there. So just think of every one of these blocks as data. That's all it is. It's just a bunch of transactions. And so with UTXOs, the reason why it costs you more to, if you, if you have a whole bunch of smaller UTXO, UTXOs, when you go to combine that into one transaction, that's a lot of data. Right. If you let's let's pretend you're sending a Bitcoin to somebody. And you had one UTXO with one Bitcoin in there. That's hardly any data. It doesn't matter how much Bitcoin is in there. That's just one piece of data, one UTXO. But let's say that you had that one Bitcoin. Let's say you had uh, 25 million sats, 20 million sats, 10 million sats, and then a bunch of like million, 500,000, 200,000 sats. That's a bunch of data. That's a bunch of UTXOs making up that balance that you're trying to send. So it's going to cost you more. Oh, we just hit a new block after 44 minutes. So that, that's going to cost you more, right? Because there's a whole bunch of UTXOs in there. So when you go to send that, it, it will create a new UTXO, but it's going to cost you a lot because you're sending a lot of data there. All those UTXOs are data. And the less you have, the less it's going to cost you to send because there's only so much space available on each block. So the bigger you, the bigger your UTXO is, the less data it costs to send in the future. Does that make sense? 